Hi folks, I'm The Lost Mapper, and today we're doing day 11 of the 30 day map challenge. Today's theme is a retro map, uh, and I was going to do a map that looks like a map from the movie War Games. Uh, so if you are a mapper, you probably maybe have seen, uh, there's this guy, John Nelson, that works for Esri, and he has a video of this from about a year ago. Uh, I thought I would do a version using QGIS. Um, so I'm going to try to replicate this particular map from that movie, give or take a few things. So I thought it would be good for us to take a few notes on the sorts of things that we see in this map to kind of give us a checklist of what we want to accomplish. So uh, right off the bat, I can see that it has a black background. I can see that it's kind of a, uh, I want to say uh, like low res vector graphics, not very detailed. Um, I see that the United States is uh, sort of in this blue outline. And then there's some set of regions. I don't necessarily know what those regions are. Um, also uh, with a, they have a dashed or dotted blue line. Um, they're numbered. Uh, and let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of them and maybe one there up in Canada, perhaps. Um, I can also see that there's a bunch of points throughout the map. So there's some white circles or white dots. And I suspect that those are maybe cities. And then there's a bunch of other shapes. There are blue triangles, hexagons, uh, fences, I'm, I'm not sure what those are. Um, and maybe some squares in there as well, even some upside down triangles. Um, so I suspect maybe those are some sort of military installations. And then we also have some submarines out in the water. And we also have these projectile lines, which I guess are meant to be missiles, nuclear missiles being fired. Okay, so that gives us a fair amount of stuff. Oh, and then there's also sort of the green outline. I'm, I'm assuming for non-US uh, territories. So the first thing we probably wanna do is get some data uh, for, this, for this information. Let's do some Googling. Uh, I'm going to say U.S. Territories Shapefile. And I think I'm going to go with these from census.gov. And if we scroll down, there's a section called Divisions. And I think that is a, it's not the same as the Wargames map, but it's a pretty good approximation of that. Um, there's also another section called regions, but that didn't look quite the same. So I'm going to skip that one. And then I want to look for USA major cities shape file. And we can, there's one on the Esri site. Okay. This one says it's deprecated, but down here it says there's a new version of this item available. So we'll grab that one. All right, this one is available. So I'm gonna click export data and I'm gonna export a geo package. Okay, I forgot that I did this already. Um, so I wasn't able to use one with the same name. So I'm just gonna to go to my existing one and click download on that. And we'll move those into our project. So those are the divisions. These are the major cities. Um, I'm also going to from I guess from natural earth data, we'll grab the countries so that we can draw those in green, draw the US territories in blue. And we'll also copy that over. Okay, so now we have some stuff to start with. So to begin, I'm going to go to project properties and give the map a black background. So I'll just choose black and step one is already done. So let's head into our project home and let's go to our countries layer 
and double click on that. Um, and then we're going to change the symbology so that they are outlines. So we're going to set the fill color to transparent, or we could also set the fill style to no brush. Uh, either one works. And the stroke color, I'm going to pick uh, this blue. And let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. And if we go back to our reference image, we're kind of mostly focused on the main continent of the US. So I'm going to zoom into that here about that much. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And I would actually say this is actually even a little bit too detailed. So I wonder if we go back to natural earth and instead of picking this large scale data, we're gonna use this small scale data since it's meant to be not to have as much detail. And let's see what that looks like instead. Uh, so I will copy that into my project and then let's open this one up. Okay, I can already see that that looks simpler. So let's copy the styles from the existing one we have and then paste it onto the new one. And then let's just remove the old one. Okay, that looks, that looks more low res, less detail. Um, and then when I look at this map, I can see it seems like Canada and Mexico have green outlines and the US has blue. So let's actually change the symbology. Uh, let's change it to categorize. Actually, let's do, why don't we try rule based instead? Actually, I need to look at the data first. I'm kind of going blind here and that's not gonna be helpful. All right, sovereignty, United States is there. United States of America. Okay, I think what we'll say then is, uh, double click to get symbology. We're going to do rules based and I'm gonna delete this blank one. Didn't mean for that to be there. I'm gonna add a new one. And the test is going to be that sovereignty uh, equals uh, United States of America. And we can see that a lot of these are not returning it. And if I go down to United States of America, it's one. Okay. So a result of zero is false and a result of one is true. And we're going to change that to have uh, no brush and then that blue outline. And then I'm going to add another rule. Let's see, can I duplicate? Uh, I'm not going to bother. I will make another rule and that expression will be sovereignty is not equal to the United States of America. And I can see Algeria and Angola and all these other places are giving me a, a one, which means it's true. And then the United States is giving me a zero, which is false. I will then change its symbology to be no brush fill as well open this up a little bit and the outline will be this green color all right and if i click ok on that i've got my united states with the blue outline and non-us uh, areas with the green outline which is similar to this uh, i think i'm also going to switch to 3857 for the project uh, coordinate reference system, because I think that will give it the more stretched out feeling. Wait, why did it switch back? 3857, there we go. Okay, and let's resume on this area. Cool, I think that that sort of ratio is more like this one. And I see that the Mexico line seems to be over the United States one. I wonder if I can change that. So I'm actually also going to give these a label. 
uh, United States of America, if only to make it easier to discern the two, and then not U.S. Uh, and I thought that the order of these would maybe define who is drawn first, but that does not seem to be the case. If I drag this down, no, it's still, still on top. So another way that we could solve this is to duplicate this layer. Duplicate this layer. I'm going to call this one United States. And I'm going to call this one non-US. And what I will do is then in the symbology, I'm actually going to remove the not US one and hit OK. And then in this one, I'm going to enable it. Um, I'm going to remove the United States one. Another way I could have done that was filter the United States layer to only show United States uh, geometry and then filter the non-US one to show non-US geometry uh, and then just change their styling that way as well. Um, I think it's fine as it is for now. We can always go back and fix that later. So now I can control the ordering of these from here. Here the green is on top, but if I drag non-US underneath, I will get uh, the blue on top. So next, I think I want to add those divisions. So I'm going to add this file. I'm going to stick with whatever transformation it's suggesting. And again, these are not similar to, it's not the same as these, but it's a, a similar feeling, a similar suggestion of there's different regions. And I think we want to do the same thing where I'm going to have a no fill. No brush, and then use that blue color for the outline. Uh, the next thing I want to do is then give those divisions their their numbers. So they have these numbers inside of them. Let's take a look at the table. There are these GeoIDs. The numbers are not the same. They're obviously not going to be the same. We could always edit them to be similar. I'm going to stick with the numbers that are there for now. Uh, so I'm going to head in and I'm going to go to labels and I'm going to label it based on single labels and the value of GeoID. And then for the font, we want to pick something that's probably um, sort of retro looking. Maybe the JetBrains Mono, which is another one that you can download. All right, that looks a little bit better. Uh, and then I think what we'll do is also change the placement of these a little bit. Um, let's see if we can get, no, uh, that one has them colliding. Horizontal. Yeah, I like how that looks. They're all firmly inside of the shape. Okay, we've got that bit. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add those cities. And right off the bat, there's way too many. Um, let's go in and change the symbology to be a white dot. So let's take this white dot and then remove the stroke from it. So stroke will be no line. And then let's make those a lot smaller because they are pretty small. Okay, that looks, uh, maybe they're a little bit bigger. I, I think that's okay for now. And so there's way too many of them. Let's take a look at the data here and let's take a look at population and maybe let's grab the top X number or maybe find a population number that gets us close. Um, maybe let's try everything that's over 500,000. Well, it does leave out Atlanta. Uh, let's try everything over 490,000. So we're going to right click on this layer, choose filter, choose population, and we're going to say it's greater than anywhere the great, uh, population is greater than 490,000. 
test that out. Wow, still got 4,000. That doesn't seem right. Hmm, I think there might be a bug there because I know now if I look at this, yeah, 37 filtered. I'm not sure why that reported the wrong number. Uh, that might be a bug. I'm not sure what it has to do with, but we've now got a smaller number of cities and I think it actually looks fairly comparable to what's on this map. I think that looks pretty cool. All right, and then what else we got going on here? We've got, uh, we've got these military installations. All right, so if we Google for US military bases, shapefile, what does that get us? Uh, there's a bunch of entries here. This one here, I mean, I always prepare these, so I, I know where I'm going. Um, but when I'm when I'm preparing, I'm going through a bunch of different uh, and a bunch of different results, trying them out, seeing what I get. Um, but for the benefit of this episode, I'm I know that I'm going to pull this uh, open data soft, soft one, and let's pull this down. Where can I download export? Yes. All right. And I'm going to grab a shape file. Got my shape file. I'm going to move it into my project. And then let's add that thing to our file. Okay. So it is not points. It is polygons. And let's open up. So there are definitely military bases in here. What we can do, we don't want polygons, we want points. So we can select this military bases layer and we can go up to, where is it? Centroids, it's right there, right where my cursor was. So we can get these centroids from all of these areas. Um, I'm not gonna get it for each part. That's if they're multi-part features. I only want one representing each base. Uh, so I'm just going to choose the military bases, leave the rest as is, and choose run. Cool. Now I have points. I'm going to disable that previous one and maybe rename this one to be military bases. Fix my typo. Um, and then again, we kind of have too much data here. Let's take a look and see... There's whether it's active or not, and that seems to be most of them. There is component. Don't necessarily know why it's called that, but there seems to be a few in here, a few different values. So let's let's go to our filter again. Right click on this layer and choose filter. And let's pick component and let's get an idea of what all of these are. So this is a, a place where we also have a choice. I could filter out the things that I want, or if we jump into symbology and choose categorized based on component, I can then uh, classify all of them and they'll each get a different look now. We can take a look at what that looks like. Okay, my QGIS is freaking out doing something, don't know what it's doing. I managed to save my project and I'm gonna quit and restart it. But before I do that, I need to export, I need to make this temporary layer, layer permanent. So I'm gonna click on that chip. I'm gonna save it as a geo package. I'm going to put it into my day 11 project and call it military bases. Okay, and then I'm gonna quit. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but I was able to restart and get to the same area. Um, the end result here is now I have all these different military base symbols on the page. And I could either filter out the ones I don't wanna see using a layer filter, or uh, using these categorized symbology, I can actually just turn off the ones that I don't want to see. 
Um, so I could turn off guard, reserve, um, and then hopefully this will just get me a smaller amount of data. Eh, not quite small enough yet. Um, Army, Air Force. I'm not sure what MC is, but I'm going to turn it off for now. Oh, and then also these all other values. It's a little less busy. I think we'll go with that for now. Maybe figure out, is there any other attribute in here that I might want to do? Um, we could do ones where the area is larger than some number. So let's see, if I reverse sort by area, and all right, if I want to grab like the top 50. Uh, so let's say that the area is greater than 100. And that's not something I could easily do in the symbology, uh, category symbology. So like we're using a combination of the two now. Uh, so area is greater than, was it 100? All right, that gets me 50. That seems to be a, a sane number. I think I just keep moving away from, all right. I should bookmark this. I should use my own advice and hit Command B and just call this US. Okay, now I can easily find it again. Now we've got a number of dots that seems fairly similar to the number of dots on here. And then we're gonna change them up a bit. So let's go back into the symbology for military bases. And let's pick one of them and just double click on the symbol. So in this, in this dialogue, I'm gonna take the symbol and double click on it. And let's change the symbol, simple marker to a SVG marker. Open this up a bit more. And we can find some shapes down here, I think. Actually, I think there's, there's another one that's different from SVG. I think it is. Wait, is it? Oh yeah, sorry. Stay under simple marker. Uh, I was making it more complicated than I needed to. We're gonna pick a triangle and the fill color we're going to leave as transparent and the stroke color we're gonna use that blue. And if we come back out, uh, that looks pretty good. I should probably open up the layer styling panel. That's um, F7. That'll allow me to see my changes without having to open and close dialogues. So why don't we try making this as three? That looks okay. And let's go to Army Active. Back to Simple Marker. There's a hexagon. Uh, the fill color will be transparent and the stroke color will be that blue. You can apply on that. And now we've got some hexagons on the page. Those could also be a little bit bigger. Um, I think those are three. All right. And what did we say in our notes? What else did we have? We had... Triangles, hexagons, fences, and squares. I don't know that we're gonna find a fence, um, but we can certainly find a square. And so let's go to, and actually we're only styling three. You can pick more if you like. You could pick less if you like. Uh, go to our simple marker, pick this square. Fill color is transparent. Stroke color is blue. So how are we doing on our list? We've got the black background, that's done. We've got low res vector graphics for the most part. We've got the United States in blue. We've got our regions, uh, they had dashed lines. So let's fix that. Uh, if I go back to our divisions, not regions, and go to the simple fill, I can change the stroke to this dashed line. And it's a little bit hard to see. What if I do dots? That's a little more that's a little more distinct. Okay. And back to our list. We've got our white dots as cities. 
We've got our blue triangles and hexagons. Uh, submarines. Uh, we also got our, let's do our green outlines. Those are also done. There's something else I want to add on to this, which is, I'm just going to call it blurriness. So if we look at that picture, it's a, it's a zoomed in picture, but in general, there's like this glow, this type of uh, display, these vector graphics always had a bit of a glow to them. So we want to try to achieve that as well. So uh, back to our map. Let's do our submarines first. So we're going to have to make these up. I'm going to create a new layer, a new geo package. I'm going to save this database in the project. I'm going to call this I don't know, deployments. I don't know what you might call that. Um, and I'm gonna call this one submarines and it's going to be a point line. And one thing I noticed is that some of them are facing to the right and some of them are facing to the left. We could capture that. Uh, so we could make a field called direction which is a text field and then use left and right to style them differently. Hopefully I can find a submarine uh, image that we can flip. Okay, so now I want to, let's move that up top and we want to actually capture a few points. Uh, so I'm gonna toggle on editing mode and draw some lines. So I'm using the add point feature and then let's go into the symbology. And we'll go with simple marker. And I don't think there's nothing down here that looks like a submarine. If we switch to SVG marker, there is a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, we can even search, but no submarines. I guess we can mm, boat. Sure. Let's use that for now. So we're going to use boat. Uh, and I did not change the color, so they're not showing up. Uh, so we want to make them a red color. Hit OK, and let's make them size 4. And maybe size, maybe even double that. Let's see what that looks like. OK, that doesn't look too bad. Now, I don't think, unfortunately, there's no way that I have found within the marker configuration to flip an image. There's rotation, but that is not the same thing. I don't see, I don't think any of the draw effects allow you to do that. Layer rendering would be for the whole layer. I guess for now, what we'll do, let's switch to categorize. We're going to use direction as the category. I'm going to click classify. Uh, I'm going to uncheck ones that don't have a direction. And then for the one that's left, for now, I'm just going to rotate it 180 degrees. It's going to look silly. Uh, maybe if we have time, we'll come back and replace that with a different method. Um, but if I hit OK, oh, I got them backwards. It's the facing, not the side that they're on. All right, let's, let's go back in there. Uh, this, we don't want to be uh, 0. We don't want that. And then this one, we want to be 180. Um, I did try a thing with, like, could I use negative 8 for the size, and it'll flip it. It does not do that. Oh, and then the colors need to be the same. They need to both be red. Boom. Okay. Um, all right. So no, those are pink, not red. I got to fix those as well. Uh, oh, all right. Today I learned that you can also just click on the entry in the layer field to get at its attributes. Uh, that's cool. I did not know that you could do that. So I'm just double clicking on that and I get directly, I don't have to go through multiple panels and get directly to uh, the marker I'm interested in. Okay, so we've got our submarines. Um, we've got all our lines. 
I'm actually not entirely sure how to pull off these, these missile lines. We could draw them ourselves. Uh, I believe the way that John Nelson did in his video was to use flight paths. Uh, I'm going to leave that as an exercise to the reader or the viewer. And I think we'll just get the sort of glowing lines thing down. Let's start off with the US. Uh, I'm going to remove that military base entry. I don't need it. I'm going to start with the United States. I'm going to double click. I'm going to head to symbology. I'm going to click on the symbol. And if I go to the simple fill symbol at the bottom here, if I open this up a little bit more, there's this checkbox called draw effects. I'm going to check that. And then there's this button to actually customize those effects. I can click on that and I can choose outer glow. And the color is going to be the same as the, um, the actual color of the line. If I hit okay on that and I come all the way back out. Okay. And then let's do the same thing for the uh, division lines. Let's head in there and pick my simple fill, choose draw effects, turn on outer glow. I'm just gonna keep it consistent two and two, and the color will be that blue. All right, that looks pretty nice. And the same thing for the non-US territories. Go to simple fill. Draw effects, outer glow. I don't know why that jumps on me every time I get in there. And we're gonna pick the green, come back out. That looks cool. Um, okay, now I'm gonna do this for all the symbols as well. I think you get the gist. I'm not gonna, I will probably edit that part out just cause it's the same thing over and over again. All right, all my symbols are glowing. Can I make the labels of the divisions glow as well? There's a buffer. I'm gonna try it with a shadow with no offset. Zero offset and two radius with this color, the blue. Is that the same one? Oops. See how that looks. Mm, I think I probably have to change how that is being, yeah, multiply. So I think we just want normal. All right, I could spend some time tweaking that, but there is a little bit of a glow now. And then finally, our submarines. Let's use that trick again and go to the marker, draw effects, outer glow, and these were red. Two and two. All right, I think in comparison, that looks pretty good. We do have, some of the bases do have names on them. So NORAD, Grand Forks. I wonder, should we try to pull that off as well? If I look at the military bases, hit F6. Let's go back to our area. And maybe we'll label them based on the area. Anything greater than, hmm, I'm going to say 1700. So I just get these first three. There's only three on the actual map. So let's try to label ones where the area is greater than 1700. So if I double click on this, and go into my labels and I go into rule based, I can add a new rule and uh, I'm gonna call the rule large and the expression is going to be area is greater than 1500. And that's gonna be most of them. Yeah, Fort Bliss is one of them. All right, and we're going to label them with the site name Let's open this up so I can get to the text. And we're gonna use that JetBrains font. Jet 
frames mono. Let's go with 12 and the color is blue. And we're gonna use that drop shadow again to achieve a blur like uh, feel. Change this to normal and change this to blue. And let's see how that looks. Those are very long names. I think I just don't want the berry one. That one's just too long. I thought, I thought I said greater than, oh, did I say 1500? Let's go back into the labels. Oh yeah, I said, I really wanted 1700. Okay, now we got three on there. That's something you could play with and figure out what you want to do. I like how this looks. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more to this particular area. And I think I will export the image and make a print layout. Um, so there you go. A retro map uh, done in the style of war games. Uh, let me see your versions of this. Let me know how I'm doing. Leave a comment, subscribe, like, hit me up on Mastodon. See you tomorrow.